Hello everybody, this is just a quick heads up to say that I will very soon be releasing a five part series about the various projects that I've been doing over the last year and a half or so in the garden. And those videos will be as follows. The first one will be on the pond and the filter and what I've done with the filter. Second video will be on the solar power off grid system that I've had installed. The third video will be on vegetable garden number one. Fourth video will be on vegetable garden number two. And the fifth video will be on my greenhouse and the thing that I've got in there. Now, if you're watching this on the Pond Guru channel, you may be thinking, I don't wanna watch any of that stuff because I'm just interested in the aquarium side of things. Well, that's good because those videos aren't going to be on this channel. They're going to be on my other channel, which is called Thousand Yard Stare. That's the one I want to do all the outdoor videos, the gardening videos, basically like the self-sufficiency sort of stuff on that channel and keep this channel, the Pond Guru one, for the aquarium sort of stuff. So I'll put a link to the Thousand Yard Stare channel in the video description for you. Before I sign off, I'll just give you reasons why I've undertaken these various projects. The first one, which was to move the filter from one side of the pond to the other side of the pond, was done because it was simply installed in the wrong place. It was an absolute nightmare to, to drain out. Um, I had a fanny on dragging 50 or 60 yards of pipe around every time I wanted to drain one section. Uh, it, it did trap a lot of muck and it did help a little bit with the clarity of the water. It certainly helped with the health of the water in the pond. I mean, the fish are absolutely tip-top condition, but it was just in the wrong place. So it's now over the other side of the pond. The drains from that run into my vegetable gardens. So it's part of the permaculture sort of setup. The solar system was installed because very shortly, we're going to be taxed quite heavily based on our carbon footprint. Again, anybody who knows me know what I think about that and also where it started and who started it and where it's leading and so on and such forth. I'm simply getting ahead of the game. If we can produce our own power, now we don't have a smart meter here because that gives the power companies license to drain any batteries or turn off your electric as they see fit in the case of a quote-unquote emergency and if you've been awake since March last year you'll know that anything can be called an emergency so that's why we've got a 12 was it 12.6 no 12.8 or 6 kilowatt solar system which to be fair is bigger than we need but on a dull day it still produces enough electric to charge the 11.6 kilowatt battery storage that's important. That's why I went big. Vegetable Garden 1 was put in purely to produce food and to supplement our diet as a family. Um, food quality is terrible, basically. You know, if you go to a supermarket or, Christ, if you buy pre-packaged processed food, it's just packed with all sorts of crap. It doesn't do you any good. So the Veg Garden is the way of trying to rectify that and give us a good more balanced healthier diet same with veg garden 2 they are laid out slightly differently in that veg garden 1 has got a few little um, semi-automatic watering systems the second one second veg garden is a bit more it's nicer to look at and it's got a lot more stuff in it you'll see those in the videos and last but not least, the greenhouse. That was put in to enable me to grow food all year using various aquaponic, hydroponic, aeroponic sort of system. I'm not quite sure what you call it, but you will see it in that last video in this series. It's not your average greenhouse because it's double glazed. It's basically just like a conservatory. And in the winter, when it was minus five overnight, you could go in there, it's six o'clock in the morning, and bear in mind that it hasn't got any heating at all in there, it would still feel warm from the night before. 
because it heats up and it holds its heat amazingly. It's, well, it's, it's like a giant propagator, you know. I'm sure by the end of the fifth video in that series, you will see why I've done what I've done. It's all part of an overall mm, self-sufficiency, permaculture, sort of self-reliance push because you save you, nobody's coming to save you. And if you think the guys in power are coming to save you or have your best interests at heart, then you, you haven't even got one eye open. So this is something that everybody should be doing to one degree or another. Obviously I've planned this out for a lot of years, I've got the land, I saved hard to get it in, and I've worked hard to make sure that these things are in place and I'm absolutely loving it because oh god man our electric bills should now be close to zero the amount of food that's going to be produced is off the scale and none of it has been watered with what, what I like to call artificial water which would be mains water it's all come from the pond via the filters being piped down and put on the garden and the plants just respond so well to it you know it'll be packed with vitamins and minerals and no pesticides <sighs> healthy body healthy mind <laughs> okay thanks for watching this it, all it was was just a bit of a heads up that's all I didn't want to put those videos out on my other channel and not see anything on this channel just in case you missed them so check that out they will be coming up very soon. Thanks for watching. Oh, and I do have loads of other filter videos that I am working on. There's still about 20 that need editing. One's nearly finished and it's on a beast of a filter. The biggest one that I've taken a look at. That is the Eheim 2260, also known as the 1500 XL. So that will be the next video in the Pimp My Filter series. See you next time.